if you've ever needed any inspiration on why developing your own soda or beverage to commercialize can lead to great things, then I have a true story for you about a small Greek soda company that back in 2012 started. And just last year in 2023, they sold to Coca-Cola for 44 million euro or $48 million US. Now, if you don't think it's possible, it is, and they didn't do anything special. So let me explain what they did, and I'll give you a few tips on how to bring your product to market. I'm Darius O'Neill, and this is Art of Drink. Now, the company I'm talking about is called Three Cents Soda. What happened was I had a small part to play in it back in 2011. And all I was doing is what I usually do here on YouTube is just teach people how to make beverages. I just uh, released my book, Fix the Pumps, in 2010, early 2011. And I was down at Tales of the Cocktail, which is one of the largest bar shows, presentations, you know, collection of bringing people in the beverage industry together in the world. And I was doing a presentation basically on the history of the soda fountain and how they used to make soda fountain beverages. Kind of in the hopes that bartenders would take that up and become the new soda jerks. A young bartender named George Bagos from Athens came, saw my presentation, went back to Athens and started making sodas just based on the information in the book and the presentation. And he made a grapefruit soda. And what happened was he took that and with a couple other people, so there was George, Vasily, George and Dimitri, so four friends, and they started making a product and then they obviously expanded their product. Now that's just not what they did is you, you just can't make a product, but they made a specific product for a specific market. So what they did was the first step was they wanted to make basically Palomas. And if you buy grapefruit soda, it usually comes in a large bottle. So what they did is they reduced the bottle size to 200 mils. They also increased the carbonation and made the flavors, you know, premium. That was their market and then they marketed it to bartenders as ultra premium sodas for things like Palomas and other highballs. And it worked. And they, the, the, the key though was they put the effort into it. And again, my only part in it was providing the information like I do on this YouTube channel. But if you take this information and run with it, there is the potential that you can turn it into a multi-million dollar company. It's all about the hustle. Knowing how to make soda is one thing, actually getting it into the hands of people who want to buy more of it is another thing. And that's for the marketing side of the equation, which I don't do. I can just show you the science and how to make it and how to make it you know, profitably. I did think about bringing George into this video, but he still works for Coca-Cola and having a video where he's telling people how to make soda or how he succeeded while he works for Coca-Cola kind of seems to put him in a hard position. So I didn't want to do that. Maybe in the future when he doesn't work for Coca-Cola anymore, when he retires, we'll talk about that. But I just didn't want to put him into an awkward situation where you know, he's kind of in a conflict. Now, as to why I've never made a soda, I actually just prefer teaching and researching. I would be happy to just continually do YouTube videos on making soda and anything drink related. That's my preference. I'm not a hustler. I'm not somebody who, definitely not a salesperson. I mean, I, I have a hard time promoting my own YouTube channel. I just prefer the science aspect of this and figuring things out. That's what makes me happy. Maybe down the road, I may start some sodas, but not in the foreseeable future. I have enough projects on the go. So the first step in being successful is obviously developing a flavor. Now, lots of people want to clone energy drinks and that's just, uh, you know, uh, most co-packers will already have a standard energy drink and then you just put the label on it. But if you actually want to create something unique that people want, that requires a little more effort and basically, on this channel, there's a whole playlist on how to formulate your own sodas. And it's not that hard. You know, uh, the perfect example is Bob Ross and paintings. So here's a word of advice from Bob Ross. Just think flavors instead of paint. We learn to, to work with what happens. And when you're at home, don't worry about following exactly what we have here. Let things happen and use what happens and create your own masterpieces. Don't just try to copy what we're doing, and you can do it. 
And yes, just as Bob Ross said, you can do it. And it is not that hard to mix. It's the same as painting. You just got to start mixing and understanding what you're working. You know, you take your primary colors and your primary flavors, you mix them and you get new colors or new flavors. And then what you do is you just start playing around with the techniques that I've showed you. And yes, you will throw lots of stuff down the sink. That is expected. That's the scientific method. You do an experiment. It doesn't turn out the way you do it. You take your notes, you throw that out, you start again, you make modifications and you keep making modifications until you get it right. One of the, the key tips is you should let your flavors age. And by aging, I mean for a week, three days minimum, but sometimes up to a month and sometimes up to a year. The old cola recipes I have from the early 1900s do age their flavor essence for about three weeks or longer. They often say longer is better. And ginger ale, I have some ginger ale I made like 18 months ago that I got to retest, but they would age it for at least a year before they'd start using it to make sodas. And all that does is it really just brings the flavors together. Because when you first mix it, they're still fairly coarse. And as what happens is over time, you know, a few days, all the oil starts to balance out and then you get an accurate representation of the flavor you're going to, you know, produce. Now, the second tip is, is don't worry too much about shelf stability. You do need to have an emulsion that's stable for, you know, uh, 30 days or so, so you can get an accurate taste of it. But when you bring your formula to a co-packer to manufacture your product, they will handle a lot of the emulsification because they have different equipment in the manufacturing side than we have at the you know experimental side and that usually has to do with emulsification and shelf stability if you're really serious into this find a co-packer they're all over the place one that does soda obviously or other beverages talk to them ask them you know about the stability stuff because they can usually give you a better answer than I can because there's just so many different ways to make soda but basically you're asking how they're going to emulsify it and whether you need to include an emulsifier that's something for your co-packer and you to decide now the last thing is is you know really then it just becomes once you have the product it's the marketing it's the labeling it's the hustle it really is about getting it out into people's hands you know, whether you're building a community or getting it into bars or restaurants or even just doing it for your own restaurant or a series of restaurants. You know, you can make these flavors on a small scale where you don't need a co-packer. You can just do them in-house and then use them and make unique drinks that will bring clientele back for those drinks that they like. But if you're going big and you want to reach and expand and turn it into a multi-million dollar company, get a co-packer and then do the marketing and then hustle on the sales. But again, it all goes back to actually having a good product. Without a good product, it's not gonna work. People don't, people can be fooled a couple times, but eventually they'll just stop drinking your product if it's not good. And that's basically what this channel does is it's almost all free. And if you want some of the extras, uh, that's over on the Patreon page. That just helps support this channel because doing all this is fairly expensive. Not this video, this is just a kind of a talking head video, but my more experimental ones do tend to require a lot of equipment. If you're interested in learning about co-packers, just write it down in the comments below. If that's something people are really interested in, I could probably go to a local co-packer co and kind of do a tour and let them kind of promote their thing and explain how the process works. So if that's something you're interested in, let me know. And again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.